I've been a bit under the weather, so I decided to cook something. Uh, I'm going to be making chicken stew for the first time. I've never made chicken stew before. I don't have a direct recipe, but I'm using uh, a mix of two. I want to make a uh, sort of like hearty root vegetable version. So I got myself a kombucha squash. So I'll be cutting that into wedges and roasting it before I start cooking anything else. Got some chicken thighs in the fridge. You know, you got went to Superstore and picked up some stuff, you know, garlic and you got your celery and uh, I'm going to add some carrots to it as well. And I picked up some red potatoes because red potatoes taste good and uh, red pepper as well. So it'll be a really colorful, healthy, tasty stew. Um, I'm going to try cooking it in the oven after frying the uh, chicken in the pan. So uh, let's get started. All right, so for the kombucha, I have to wash it, put it on a pan and bake it for 20 minutes, just straight up like this. Then you slice off the top, cut it into wedges and do it again. Okay, I totally read the recipe wrong. You, you're supposed to cut it up raw, then put it on a pan, not bake it, then put it in a pan again. That'd be overkill. All right, I'm gonna go do that instead. Right, my knife is shitty, but I was able to cut it in half anyway. Now to scoop it out and then cut it into wedges. All right, so I've uh, neatly arranged them. Uh, I think you have to flip your kombucha halfway during cooking time, so you have to do them on one side. And I'm gonna put some salt and pepper on these bad boys and then half an hour in the oven. By the way, this took like a really long time. Uh, so if you're ever at someone's house and they cook kombucha squash for you, that means they love you. Or if you're at a restaurant, um, order it, it's good. As you can see, I've been cutting up the rest of the veggies while waiting for my squash to be done. It's at the halfway point now, so I'm gonna go get, uh, uh, I'm gonna go get it. Finished product, it looks so good. I've cut up the chicken, smaller pieces, salt, pepper, flour, waiting for the pan to heat up. And then I got all my stuff here, herbs and everything. Let's do this.
so it took a few hours to cook all that. It's actually a lot of work. Um, so I may, I'm, I was the only thing I could find a container. And uh, so I've tried the um, stew, like I tried it, you know, before eating it. I used a uh, chicken broth with garlic flavor from Campbell's, from the grocery store. Really strong garlic flavor, so that sort of overtakes all of it, which kind of made me mad. But I also like fried the chicken with garlic and then added garlic to the thing. So let's just try it out. Chicken turned out really good. Potatoes are bland because I didn't put enough oil in the pan. So they're kind of dry. Kombucha, obviously I roasted ahead of time, so. <laughs> Try carrots now. Hmm, carrots are perfect consistency. Mm, red pepper not, overcooked. It's a very rest, um, stew is a very versatile recipe because you can do whatever you want. You can do it with butternut squash, you can do it with peas, string beans, you can make dumplings like chicken and dumplings like stew. I might do that next. And no, no stew is complete without some delicious fresh hot bread. Mm. So get cooking. On another note, um, if you're going to thicken your chicken stew, Make sure to do it with the roux, the butter, and the uh, flour because um, the recipe that I used in part for this says it's easier to freeze. And I'm probably going to have to do that because there's so much stew. I'm not going to be able to eat, I don't want to eat stew for a whole week. So I'll be able to freeze individual portions a lot easier because I use the roux.